Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going over example 8 in the basics of static equilibrium series. So today it's just building on on ex uh, previous previous examples. Um, we're just going to look at a uh, frame, I guess, with two pins and a fixed support. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, step Step number one is always, always, always label the reactions you are trying to find, all right? So in this case, we have A, Y, A, X, and then this is a fixed support, so it's also resisting against moment. Now, if you don't um, really uh, know what that means, um, I suggest you check out one of my previous videos, though I don't think I cover fixed support, so maybe I'll upload one later. All right, but yeah, you should have a okay understanding. It just means things can't spin around that point, unlike this uh, hinge support we have here, right? So then this is F Y, and then F X. Okay. So once we have one of these uh, five reactions down, we have two hinges, right? Uh, sorry, not two hinges, two pins. So what we can do at those pins is simply just break up the system, all right? So into individual pieces. And then when you break them up, also add intermediate like forces. So I'll just show you. So let me just move that up so we can see better. Okay, perfect. So right now I've split up uh, the the frame uh, at where there are hinges, okay? So what we're gonna do now is actually just very simple. We're going to, where we split, we are going to add um, the forces. So uh, this is CY, CX, let's do DY, DX, and again, you can, you can assume any direction you want so long as the ones that the that are labeled the same are equal and opposite. So you notice how oh, that was wrong, but you notice how here, for example, at C, I assign one up, one down, and then to the left at this point and to the right at this point. Okay, you could do it down, right, and then up left, it's really up to you, it doesn't matter, but just make sure they're equal and opposite. So in this case, for dy, what would I assign for dy and then dx? It would be down for dy, and then to the left for dx, okay? And now we're just all set up for the problem. So first thing is to do is just to solve, okay? So I'm looking at this problem and I can see that we can solve two things right away, okay? We can solve CY and DY. Well, you might say, why is that? Well, it's very simple because um, it's a segment of beam that is just under symmetrical loading, right? So it would just be uh, this two kilonewtons times this distance, so 10 meters, 20 kilonewtons, and then divide by two, because it's equal on both sides, right? So. It's just 10 kilonewtons for each of them. Okay, now we have that, we can carry that forward, right? We have to have to remember this, okay? So let's just move on to the uh, D, DEF segment, all right? So this segment, um, what I would do is I would probably find my force, uh, whoa, I forgot to label these excuse me, fx and fy, okay? That's what we're trying to find here. So we can just take some moments around f, right? And then use, use these cy and dy values to hopefully find um, what we're missing, okay? So some of the moments around f counterclockwise equals positive. So we have two times five, this is from the distributed load, times 2.5, which is half of the distance. You're just replacing it with an equivalent load, but I'm going a bit faster here, okay? So that causes the systems to spin counterclockwise, so it's positive, plus dy um, 
times 5, which is that distance, and then finally dx. So dx is also causing the system to spin counterclockwise. Just imagine pulling in it if you're not sure, right? Just imagine holding your finger down here at f and just pulling it, right? Intuitively spe speaking, it spins counterclockwise, all right? That's how I think of it. But once you have dy and then plus dx, dx, and that perpendicular distance is 12. And then finally, check if there are no more forces. No, there are none. And that set that equal to zero, all right? So now we know dy is equal to 10, so we can just get that replaced there, right? And the rest is very simple. So we got negative 12 dx, we're just moving it to that side, equals uh, 25 plus 50, 75. So dx equals 75 divided by negative 12. That's negative 6.25 kilonewtons, all right? So this just means that whatever we assumed is just in the other, other direction. And the trickiest part about this problem, I would say, is don't don't bother, like you've already you've already set the sign conventions as you know to the right or to the uh, downwards right if you if you change it now and just say oh because I assumed it a DX to be going to the left let's just replace it to the right and hopefully things will work out it could if you are very um, diligent about it but most of the time just assign the signing conventions and forget about it. Just keep it in variables. And finally, when you're ready to plug in the numbers, just simply plug in the negative and everything should work out, all right? So once we have this dx value, right, we can just simply try to find uh, fy and fx. So sum of forces in the y direction set upwards equals the positive, all the good jazz, and then fy minus uh, dy minus 2 times 5 from the distributed load, right? And then that equals to 0. And then finally, fy, uh, fy, and then dy equals 10. So minus 10, minus 10 again equals 0, and fy equals 20 kilonewtons. Okay, highlight that. And then sum of forces in the x direction, again, for this joint. So it's um, right to the right is positive. So we have fx minus dx. And there are no horizontal forces, so we can get that equal to 0. And so fx would then just be equal to dx. And dx equals negative 6.25. Okay, see how it just works out? We didn't have to really think about it um, too much. We just plug it in a negative, okay? Now, moving on to the other side, more or less of the same thing, okay? And what we set here is AY is upwards, AX is to the right, and MA is going counterclockwise, okay? So we'll just, uh, again, just take a sum of moments around A. The trickiest part is it does not equal to zero. Well, it, it does if you include MA, but we'll go, for that, right? <laughs> so if we take a sum of moments around A, right? All we need to do is just do this exact same things, right? So this two kilonewtons times five, so this is two kilonewtons, right? 2 kilonewtons times 5 times 2.5. So that's the, this distance from A if you replace it with a point load. And then um, that's spinning it clockwise. So it's negative minus CY times 5. So that's also spinning it clockwise. And then finally, minus uh, 12. This distance is 12. yeah, 12 meters, times Cx, okay? And then finally, we have to include the Ma here, and then that equals to zero, okay? So don't, when, when you see a fixed support, 
don't forget that this moment exists, all right? Because if you if you don't add it, well, things won't really work out, right? And if you set this equal to counterclockwise, it's just very simple. It's just add an MA at your equation, right? So once we have this, we can just solve, right? So once again, that's 10 negative 25 minus five times CY. CY was 10, we found, so negative 50 minus C 12 CX plus MA equals zero, okay? Now, you might be asking, wait a minute, where, uh, what are we finding here? Are we finding MA or CX? What's going on, right? Well, in this case, uh, we can just find CX right away, right? If you look at the original system here, right, when everything at C or D cancels out, right, we can actually just do sum of forces on this system or, or just intuitively look, right? If, if we know fx, which we already found, was to be negative 6.25, then um, we can just do a sum of forces here, ax plus fx equals zero, and then ax equals negative fx, so fx equals negative, so ax equals 6.25, right? 6.25 that way, this is correct, okay? Now, if that confused you, which uh, I, I do admit, it, I jumped around a bit, if that made sense, um, great. It is, a, it is a bit of a shortcut or it just got something that comes with intuition, but let's just do it step by step, right? So we know that we found fx over here, right? All the way over here. And that was because we found dx. dx is over here, right? And dx was also over here, right? So if we do sum of forces in this on this beam in the middle, right? Sum of forces in the x direction equals zero. So dx minus cx equals zero. So dx equals cx, right? And then finally, we know that we have our cx equals to dx, which is equal to negative 6.25, right? So <laughs> jumping around again uh, a bit, and if you can see it clearly from the beginning, that's great, but if you can, it's always, and mechanics is actually very simple. It's sometimes, it's just a th the same three equations over and over again, and I'm sure you've noticed that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just sometimes a bit more tedious than than I'd like. <laughs> so we have um, 12 times CX, which is negative 6.25, right? Uh, equals negative MA, since we're solving that, we'll might as well move it over, right? Uh, so 50 and 70, whoa, 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 negative 25, right? And this equals negative 75, and this equals positive 75, right? 12 times 6, negative 12 times negative 6.25. Yep, 75, and then that equals negative MA, so MA would just conveniently cancel out to zero. Wow, so uh, that was, that was, well, usually problems are kind of like that, complex equations, but in the end, it just comes out to zero. All right, so once we have MA, let's see what else we need to solve. We can just do a sum of forces around here, All right? So sum of forces in the Y direction sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero, right? So that's uh, ay minus cy, ay minus cy minus, what is that, two times five? Two times five, that's just from the distributed load. So that equals zero, okay? So uh, let's see, ay minus cy equals 10, and then cy, what did we get? It's just 10. So Ay equals 20 kilonewtons. And finally, sum of forces. Once again, in the x direction, pause, uh, to the right is positive, right? We have 
this AX force and then we have this CX force, right? So AX plus CX equals zero and that's the only two horizontal forces. CX equals to DX equals to negative 6.25. So AX would just equal to 6.25, positive. Okay, so yeah, that's that's really it. Now, at this stage of the game, I guess, um, uh, I mean, of the problem <laughs> stage of the game, at this stage of the problem, you can go back and you can just relabel the forces uh, in the proper directions, or you can keep it as the directions you assumed and just label, uh, just write it as a negative value. Whatever makes sense to you, just do it that way. All right. So. Um, once again, we have a x a y m a f y and f x. Ooh, let me just add a kilonewtons there, and uh, kilonewtons there. Okay, and uh, might as well add kilonewtons meter here. Okay, so that's that's it for this problem. Actually, um, it looks well. It doesn't look easy, but uh, and it, and it's not exactly easy as well, but. Um, yeah, now it's uh, just follow the steps. So just a bit of summary. Again, when you see these hinges, uh, let me get my. When you see these pins, sorry, uh, just split up the system wherever you see that, and just add forces that are equal and opposite on these ends, right? It doesn't have to be equal and opposite here, right? As you as you probably know by the C Y and D Y, right? But C X and C Whoa, whoa, whoa I just found a. One of these are Y. I hope I didn't do that on the other side. Okay, perfect. Yep. So yeah, just um, and then a fixed support. Always remember add this extra MA here. Otherwise, uh, things don't work out for you. But yeah, that's that's the end of the problem. If you have uh, any uh, comments, concerns, questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments section below. But I think um, that's where we're almost wrapped up for this section, at least. Um, so if you have any problem requests, just uh, let me know again in the comment section. And um, I'll see you guys later. That's it for this video. Goodbye.